Hello again everyone. Today, I will give a lecture on basic tissues topic. As a reminder, don't forget to fill in the attendance form, where the link is attached in UKM folio under this topic. And one more, as you go through the video of this topic, you may pause anytime, in case you want to focus on the specific slide. Okay, without further ado, let's begin. Do you know, that there are four types of tissues? They are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue and nervous tissue. Here, are some of the main functions, of each tissue. I will explain, each of this tissue, as we go through this topic. First, we will start with the epithelial tissue. So, the layers of cells, that cover internal and external surfaces in human body, is called epithelia. Glands, are also part of the epithelial tissue. And here, are some characteristics of epithelia. Epithelia have cell junctions, meaning that the cells have a cellular structure, that provide contact or adhesion between neighboring cells. The epithelia have two surfaces, which are apical and basal and epithelia are attached to the basal lamina or basement membrane by the basal surface. Epithelia are lacking of blood vessels. And, they have the ability to regenerate. Here, are some of the important functions of epithelial cells. They act as a barrier protection and control permeability. With sensory cells inside the epithelial tissues, they also give the sensation. And, via glandular epithelium, they release secretions, such as sweat glands. Epithelial tissues, consist the unit of epithelial cells. Therefore, the question is, how the epithelial cells maintain the tissue integrity? First, by intercellular connections. Second, epithelial cells attached to basal lamina. Third, by the ability of epithelial cells to repair, or regenerate new cells. Okay. I want to talk about intercellular connections. The connection consists of cell junctions, which are the structure, that bind the neighboring epithelial cells, or extracellular material, together. There are four main types of cell junctions. Occluding, or tight junction, gap junction, adherence junction, and desmosomes. I will briefly explain, the characteristics of each type of cell junction. For occluding, or tight junction, it seals neighboring cells to prevent molecule leakage. For adherence junction, or can be called as, adhesion belt, it locks the actin bundle, I repeat, actin, of neighboring cells. For gap junction, it allows small molecules to pass between neighboring cells. For desmosome, it locks the intermediate filaments, of neighboring cells. Another family under desmosome, is called hemidesmosome. For hemidesmosome, it locks the intermediate filaments, of a cell to basal lamina, or basement membrane. Next, let's learn about the classification of epithelia. In a simple way, to give name to the specific epithelia, based on their layers, and their shape. For layers, they are either, simple, or stratified. Simple, for single layer of cells. And stratified, for more than one layer of cells. For epithelial shape, it can be squamous, cuboidal, or columnar. Here is the table showing you the classification of epithelia, by simple layer, and three different shapes. As you can see, all of the epithelium is a single layer of cells. Then, if the cell shape is flattened, it is called squamous epithelium. If the shape is cuboid, it is called cuboidal epithelium. And, if it is in column shape, it is called columnar epithelium. But, remember, the name of epithelium should start from layer, followed by shape. Next. The layer is stratified, with more than one layer of cells. Then, followed by different shape of the cells, because human body is so special, we have two additional epithelium, which cannot be categorized, by the rules of layer and shape. The two epithelium are, pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Pseudo, means fake, or false. It means, the epithelium consists of packed cells, making it appear as many layers. But, actually each cell is attached to the basement membrane. Next, transitional epithelium. Transition, means that the epithelium is capable to change shape. Example location for this epithelium, is in the urinary bladder. So, the transitional epithelium can change shape, as your bladder contract and expand. 
I will go through each type of the epithelium. First, simple squamous epithelium. It is important for absorption and diffusion. However, in certain location of the human body, the name of simple squamous epithelium can change. Example, in body cavity lining, it is called mesothelium. I'm sure, you still remember our body cavities topic, right? And second example, endothelium, which lines the heart and blood vessels. Here are some more explanation on the simple squamous epithelium. You may pause and read it. Next, stratified squamous epithelium. It is important for protection. There are two types, keratinized and non-keratinized. Only for the keratinized layer, it is located on the skin surface. Here are additional infos on stratified squamous epithelium. For cuboidal, we also have simple and stratified cuboidal epithelium. For simple cuboidal epithelium, example location, such as in the kidney tubules and thyroid gland. And example location for stratified cuboidal epithelium is the sweat gland. Next, the columnar epithelia. For simple columnar epithelium, you may find it in some locations, such as stomach, intestine, and gallbladder. For stratified columnar epithelium, example locations are in the epiglottis and salivary gland. And for pseudostratified columnar epithelium, the cells typically have cilia. Common locations for this epithelium are in the trachea, bronchus, and nasal cavity. And last epithelium is transitional epithelium. This epithelium can change its shape. Common location for this epithelium is the urinary bladder. Here, some more infos about the transitional epithelium. I have a short video that explain about the pseudostratified columnar epithelium and transitional epithelium. Please click on the link in UKN folio or in the description below. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning, gland is also part of the epithelial tissue. So, there are two types of glands, endocrine and exocrine. The main difference between the two glands is endocrine has no ducts, while exocrine has ducts. For exocrine gland, as it has ducts, it has three mode of secretions. Merocrine, apocrine, and holocrine secretions. For merocrine secretion, it released by vesicles, or exocytosis. For apocrine secretion, it released by shedding the cytoplasm. For holocrine secretion, it released by cells bursting. The glandular epithelia is classified according to the gland structure, which are unicellular and multicellular. For unicellular, means single gland, the example is goblet cell. For multicellular gland, it can be further categorized into structure, and shape. For the structure of the duct, there are two types, which are simple, and compound. And for the shape of the gland, it can be tubular, alveolar, or acinar. Alveolar and acinar are similar, it is just that acinar has a small lumen, which is the inside space. Here, are the simplified image, about the several types of simple glands, for tubular, and alveolar. And here, the image of compound glands. Okay, here comes the question. You may test yourself, do you still remember the type of epithelium? How about in the stomach? Okay, now let's move to the second basic tissue, which is the connective tissue. Let's look at some of the main functions. Connective tissue is important to connect the epithelial tissue to the rest of the body. It also gives structure to the human body, store energy, and plays a role as a transporter. As compared to epithelial tissue, the connective tissue has no contact with the environment. I will explain about connective tissues according to these three classifications. Connective tissue proper, fluid connective tissue, and supportive connective tissue. First, we start with the connective tissue proper. There are two categories, loose and dense connective tissues. The difference between the two categories is simple. The name loose means less fibers 
and more ground substance. One example, is fat, or adipose tissue. While, for dense, it has more fibers, and less ground substance. One example, is the tendon. Let's look at the component, of connective tissue proper. There are cells, fibers, and ground substances. For fibers, there are three types, collagen, reticular, and elastic fibers. For ground substance, it is an amorphous gel-like substance, and colorless. You can see an example, here, if we put all the components into an image. Okay, let me explain about the connective tissue fibers. First, collagen fibers, which are the most common fibers. Example locations, for collagen fibers, are tendons, and ligaments. For reticular fibers, they are network of interwoven fibers. Example locations, are in the kidney, spleen, and lymph nodes. Next, elastic fibers. Elastic fibers are capable to return, to their original length, after stretching. Example locations, are skin, lungs, and blood vessels. Ground substance, another component, in the connective tissue proper. It fills the spaces, between cells, and fibers components in the connective tissue. Okay, you know already about the components, of connective tissue proper. Now, let's learn about the two categories, of connective tissue proper. I will start with loose connective tissue. There are three types, areolar, adipose, and reticular. Here, I included the image of loose connective tissues. You can see that, all these tissues, have more ground substance, and less fibers. Second category, is dense connective tissues. This connective tissues are packed, with collagen, and elastic fibers. There are two types, dense regular, and dense irregular. Here, some explanations on the locations, and functions, of dense regular connective tissue. If you look at the image, you can see that, the tissue is packed with fibers, and very little ground substance. Also, for dense regular, the tissue is arranged, in organized way. Here, are dense irregular. The tissue is not organized, as compared to the previous, dense regular. Example locations, are in the deep dermis. Alright, after you have learned the connective tissue proper, next, is the fluid connective tissue. Blood, and lymph, are under this category. Fluid tissues, carry specific cell types, such as, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Here, are the images of the blood cells. Next, supportive connective tissues. They are, cartilage, and bone. First, the cartilage. It consists of cartilage matrix, which is the ground substance, and chondrocytes, which are cartilage cells. The chondrocytes, are surrounded by lacunae, which is a chamber. There are three types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Let's go through one by one of the cartilage. Let's start with the hyaline cartilage. Here, are some explanations on locations, and functions, of hyaline cartilage. Example locations, are in the sternum, and trachea. If you look at the image, there are several scattered chondrocytes, that sit in the lacunae, surrounded by the cartilage matrix. One more, hyaline cartilage, has a clear matrix, without fibers. Second, elastic cartilage. Example locations, are in the external ear, and larynx cartilage. If you see the image, this time, for elastic cartilage, the matrix is filled, with elastic fibers. Third, fibrous cartilage, or you can also call it, fibrocartilage. Example location, is in the intervertebral discs. And, for fibrocartilage, the matrix is filled, with collagen fibers. Okay, done with the cartilage. Bone, 
is also part of the support of connective tissues. There are three main cells, in the bone, osteoblast, osteoclast, and osteocyte. The osteocytes, are cells that are embedded in the bone, which come from the osteoblast. You will learn more specific, in the musculoskeletal lecture. Here, are some images of normal, versus osteoporosis bone. In the bone, we have compact, and spongy bone. Usually, in osteoporosis, the compact, and spongy bones, become thin, weak, and easily broken. And here, are some more images, of the bone. As compared to cartilage, where we have chondrocytes, in the bone, we have osteocytes, sitting inside lacunae. Okay, by now, you have learned epithelial, and connective tissues. Now, the third basic tissue, is the muscle tissue. Muscle tissue, is important to contract, and produce body movement. There are three types, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscles. For skeletal muscle, they are long, cylindrical, striated, and multinuclei, which you can see, in the image. For cardiac muscle cells, they are called, cardiocytes. One important characteristic of cardiac muscle, is the intercalated discs. And, as it is cardiac muscle, therefore, the muscle is located in the heart. The cardiac muscle, is branched, striated, and has single nucleus. Next, is smooth muscle. The smooth muscle, is spindle shaped, and tapered. Also, the smooth muscle, is short, has single central nucleus, and no striation. Usually, smooth muscle, is located in digestive, respiratory, and reproductive organs. For further details on muscle, you will learn it, in the musculoskeletal lecture. Okay, let's test yourself. Can you name, the muscle, with these criterias, short, branched, and striated? All right, now we move to the last basic tissue, which is neural, or nervous tissue. Some of the main functions, of the neural tissue, are conducting impulse, sense the internal, or external environment, and process information. Two components, in the central nervous system, are brain, and spinal cord. And for neural cells, they are neurons, and neuroglia. Neurons, are the nerve cells, while neuroglia, are supporting cells, to the neurons. Some examples, of neuroglia, are oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, and Schwann cells. For cell parts, of a neuron, they are cell body, dendrite, and axon. The cell body, contains the nucleus, and nucleolus. The dendrites, are short branches, that extend from the cell body. And the axon, is a long extension of the cell body. And here, is the image of the cell body, dendrites, and axon, in one image. You will learn more details about neural tissue, in the central nervous system, and autonomic nervous system lectures. With that, thank you everyone for your attention. Don't forget to fill the attendance form. The link is in the UKN folio, under this topic. Bye, and take care.